Hi, it's Joanna, and I'm so excited that you're joining me for my Pilates classes. And I'm really also excited that you've made the time to go over this intro to Pilates session with me. There are some really important concepts that are going to help you to make sure that you get the most out of your Pilates session, firstly. Also, so that you don't injure yourself, and also so that we protect ourselves from any injuries or um, little imbalances that you might have. So I'm going to help you to understand a few of those things so that you get a better Pilates workout or a better Pilates application on your body. Because what we want out of these sessions is to not just do a workout, but to create movement and strength in our body that gives us a benefit outside of the studio or outside of your lounge room or wherever you happen to be practicing. Let's start with the Pilates principles. So we're going to carry those through all the exercises as you go through each session. The first one is centering. So we all know that we talk about our core or engaging our core muscles. We're going to talk about those muscles shortly. But what we want is that anything we do is originating from that center or it's often known even as your powerhouse. So if you think this is your physical center of gravity, or this is the center of our body, this is um, where we want to allow movement to initiate from. So I'm going to stabilize and balance around that. So if we're talking core stability, what does that even mean? If I was standing on the edge of a cliff, for example, or on a balance beam, and I start to fall forward, how am I going to stop falling on my face? A couple of ways I could do this. I could stick my bottom out. So stick my butt out in the opposite direction. That's going to stop me from falling. I could stick a leg out in the opposite direction and that's going to counterbalance where my weight is. Or someone could hold on to the back of my shirt. That could stop me from falling too. So something else, an actual physical something else is stopping me from falling. If I don't do any of those, and I get my slight falling forward, but then I engage my core muscles, that's counterbalancing my falling forward and stopping me from falling on my face. So that's a concept that we want to apply through the exercises. So as I move my leg, maybe away from my center of gravity rather than moving my back to counterbalance that, I would use my core muscles. So that was our centering, control. We want to make sure that we're in control of all the movements we do. So basically, we don't want to be just haphazardly throwing the movement around. Every movement has a purpose. We're in control all the way, all the way up, all the way down, not lift and then drop. We're not just going to pick up a bag of glasses and then, or crystal glasses, and then drop them on the floor. We're going to control that lower. Control. We're going to work on precision. So your aim actually is to be as precise as possible with the movement so that rather than doing lots and lots of a particular movement and doing them to a point of where you're fatiguing or badly, we want to do a few less. So Pilates is usually less repetitions of an exercise to make sure that we can maintain our form and do that well. Control, centering, position, breathing. We're going to do some breathing. Let's talk about the breathing now. When I'm breathing, I'm going to inhale through my nose and feel that breath being drawn into my lungs and opening up through the side of my ribs. So I'm going to feel this breath expanding my ribs as wide as I can and my rib cage is opening. And then as I breathe out, I'm going to feel my ribs closing and the breath is expelling out through my mouth. The other thing I want you to think about as you breathe in is what your spine is doing. So as I inhale, I'm going to imagine that the discs in between my vertebrae are little air pockets or air bubbles or balloons or whatever you like to think, something that can fill with air. And then as I breathe in, I want to imagine those inflating. If it helps, close your eyes. And so inhaling to feel the spine inflating and lengthening and the ribs expanding wide. So I'm trying not to breathe into my ribs this way. I'm trying not to just breathe into my belly and I'm trying not to breathe into my shoulders. Okay, so we'll add in some core engagement and or awareness and then we'll combine that with the breath. So going back to our centering, we want to 
find our core muscles. So those are the deep muscles through your body. So if you think like apple core, it goes up through the middle of the apple. So we want to find our core, which goes up through the center of the body to find that support for our spine and pelvis and allow us to move better. The pelvic floor is the base of that core. So the pelvic floor is a sling of muscles that go between the pubic bone and tailbone and the sitting bones and they're supporting us and yes, men have them too. We want those muscles to support not only us for continence, but also support our organs. So that's our, think of it as your undercarriage. So if you imagine like a, um, a beautiful horse or a greyhound and it has this lovely supported undercarriage here that supports all their abdominals and their um, pelvic organs and those sorts of things. That's our undercarriage, our pelvic floor. We don't want it to be too tight. We're not holding on like this at all. We, want to, we don't want it to be sagging down either. We want it to have a little bit of springiness and tone and be able to support us so that when we run or jump or do anything like that, that those um, pelvic floor muscles will switch on. Um, but it's also going to allow us to move our legs freer in the hip socket because our pelvis is more lifted and supported. As we come up a little higher, we find the deeper layer of abdominal muscles. So not the ones we see, not your six pack, not your obliques which twist us, but deeper than that. That's called your transverse abdominals or TA for short. Okay, so that's like a wrapping around. So as I feel that drawing up from the pelvic floor and I start to feel that drawing up between the hip bones, much deeper though, all the way up between my sitting bones and I feel this wrapping around from my deep back muscles all the way around. So with the pelvic floor and those abdominal muscles engaging, I feel that nice feeling of support through the pelvis and up between my hip bones. As I breathe out, my diaphragm, which is the top of that corset, is lifting to push the breath out. The back part of that inner corset we're creating is a group of muscles coming up through your spine called the multifidus. And they crisscross, well not like that, they crisscross, lace up um, through your spine. And they're nice and deep and they're gonna to help to support the spine. So if you can imagine on that breath out, as we feel the ribs close, we're going to feel that lift from the pelvic floor, we're gonna zip up, we can imagine a little bit of a lace up crisscross corset through the back and the diaphragm is pushing the breath out. As I breathe in, I feel my spine lengthen. I'm inflating through the spine. I'm opening up through the ribs. As I exhale and my ribs are closing, I'm gonna allow that pelvic floor to draw in and up and I keep that zipping up on the inside to feel this tightening between the hip bones through the waist and up under the ribs where my diaphragm is. And then I breathe in and I feel the spine is lengthening and my ribs are expanding, so long and broad. As I exhale, I feel lifting and closing. So I'm feeling lifting and trying to find those deeper muscles. I want to watch that and push my belly out. I'm trying to feel that being drawn in from the inside. So it's a lengthening on the breath in and an internal lift on the breath out. Before we go down to the floor, I just want to talk a little bit about shoulders. Often we're a little bit rounded forwards in the shoulders because we do a lot of this type of movement, typing, on the phone, driving, pushing the trolley, feeding the baby. It's a very common position to be very tight through the shoulders. What we want to think about is not just pulling back because you can see my shoulders narrow a lot. What I want to try and imagine is that my shoulder tips are reaching out to the sides of the room and I want to feel my collarbones opening up right from the middle here all the way out to that shoulder tip, which is actually where it meets the shoulder blade. So I'm gonna feel nice and broad and open through those collarbones and feeling my shoulders are reaching out to the side of the room. Imagine they're like a coat hanger. I'm also gonna feel a little bit of a wrapping underneath my armpit, so I'm not squeezing tight, but I'm gonna try and feel like I tuck under, underneath my armpit as if I'm going to try and tuck my t-shirt sleeve underneath. That's going to help to draw those shoulder blades nice and flat on the ribs and help engage some of these muscles which help to support those shoulder blades and stop them from winging out. Now let's make our way to the floor. We're going to talk about our neutral spine and that is as much as we can the natural curves of the spine. We're all slightly different in our um, structure of our bodies 
Um, but we want to try and feel the weight into the centre of the pelvis. So we were talking a centre of gravity earlier. And as much as we can, spine between the ribs, but also underneath the head. If you feel like your head is tipping back a lot, or you can't get the ribs down as we go through this, a little cushion can help to slightly bring you forward and help you find that. So see how you go. Feel, first of all, if I rock my pelvis, so if I tip my pubic bone towards me, so my hips drop, my lower back is flat. Can you see that? I'm flattening my lower back into the floor. If I go the other way, my back arches a lot, I come right on my shoulders, my pubic bone is now lower than my hip bones, and I'm quite arched through my back. We want to find the middle of those points with the pelvis, so not tucked, not arched too much. I want to feel where my hip bones and pubic bone are level. I like to pick my hips up, push them towards my ankles and lower down to make my lower back long. And I'm trying to find that point where my hip bones and pubic bone are level. The weight is through that centre of my hip area, that centre of gravity we talked about earlier, so my sacrum. So it's in that area there. My tail is on the floor, but I'm imagining it's reaching along the floor like a big heavy tail, as opposed to pushing in or tucking under. But let's think about that broadening of the shoulders that we talked about before. So not rounding, not pinching, but nice and open. So I'm going to feel that reach out to the side. If you turn your palms up, that should be a little easier, as long as you haven't lifted those ribs. And then you can try and keep that little wrapping under the armpits, biceps facing the ceiling, as you turn your arms. And there can be thumbs up, or your palms down, but that way I've got this nice open shoulder area. And one more breath, breathing in. And then exhaling to zip up, feel that little wrapping around under the ribs. I'm going to draw my shoulder blades slightly down into that waist as well. Alright, let's add a little leg movement just to feel how that works. I've made sure through all of this that my knees are pointing to the ceiling, my legs are parallel so that I'm not just letting them flop in or drop out. And I want to inhale to prepare. As I breathe up, I'm going to engage those core muscles and use that to let my leg float up off the floor. We're just going to hold it here on the breath in. And then as we breathe out, really zipping up and using those core masses to counterbalance the leg moving. So we do the other side. We're going to take a breath in to prepare. Long spine. As you breathe out, I'm going to move this arm so you can see. As you breathe out, zip up the tummy and the leg is moving in the hip socket without my back moving. So I'm going to inhale here, nice and wide into the ribs, don't let that belly pop out, and then exhaling, lowering all the way down to the floor. A quick word on that leg position. Whenever we're in this position here, we want to create sort of a tabletop position, um, making sure that it's not too far away so it doesn't pull you, but I definitely don't want to be sagging in my lower back. I'm trying to maintain that pelvis position, make sure my leg feels like then all the way through the thigh is sitting down into that back of the hip socket rather than trying to hold it up with my thighs. And I'm going to almost imagine that my leg is continuing past my hip and down into the floor. Feeling like the hips is really still staying nice and open and flat and in line with that pubic bone. So anytime we're in that position throughout the classes, that's what you want to try and think about. If you feel like you're gripping, you need to try and allow it to sit and use those deep abdominal muscles and pelvic floor a little bit more. Just going over your abdominal work, so whenever we create a curl up position, we want to try not to think crunch. We want to, we want to focus on, whenever we do a curl up or a chest lift, we want to try not to think of it as a crunch. So I feel like a crunch is like a bit of a lying down slouch. What I want to try and think about more is that my spine is getting longer. So as I curl up, my spine is creating this big long curve by my abdominals drawing in and up. I want to make sure my spine is really long. If I start arched, it's very hard to do more than just lift my neck. Um, I'm going to tuck my hips under, stretch towards my ankles and lower down so I'm really long. My rib cage is down. Again, a little cushion is great to start with. I'm going to inhale. Feel my spine lengthen, my ribs expand wide, my hips stay nice and flat. 
As I exhale, I draw up from the pelvic floor, zip in the tummy, allow my ribs to draw down towards my waist, and that's going to curl me up off the floor. I'm going to give those shoulder blades a little squeeze from underneath them. It can help if you squeeze under your armpits and you breathe in and you roll back down again. I'm going to exhale, draw the pelvic floor and the lower abdominals in and up, and I'm going to curl up from under the ribs. I'm going to inhale and come all the way back down again. I can move all my hands behind my head also, making sure that I'm not arching, so I still want my ribs to start on the floor. And rather than pushing your elbows forward, think about them being wide and like that little feeling of like a little scoop and wrap under the armpit. So I'm pushing forward, flattening those shoulder blades on my ribs and creating a strong frame. I breathe in. And then I'm going to exhale. Draw the ribs in and curling yourselves up. And I'm going to still push forward from under that armpit area right from my elbows. And then I'm going to inhale, roll my spine back. Just get there in time to exhale. Curling forward. Inhale, rolling the spine back down again. And lengthening all the way onto the floor. So, no moving the pelvis, no pushing the belly up. Those are the important things to remember. You're not trying to come high. You're just trying to curl the head and shoulders up to underneath those ribs there. One final word on applying the Pilates principles to your practice. Going back to our precision, just be sure that at any time, you're only moving as far as you can go without losing that control. So for example, if I was to reach my leg away from my body and I feel like I can't control my back because my belly is popping, my ribs are popping out, I can't maintain that core stability, then back it off. Don't make your leg go quite as far. Build the strength in that slightly reduced range of, mo range of movement. Build the strength there and then continue to improve and challenge yourself as you find you get stronger. One more principle that we haven't covered yet is flowing movement. We want to keep our movement going all the time rather than out in because we don't move like that during the day. We want to keep that movement going. So we inhale, get to one end of the movement and then we exhale and we get to the other end of the movement and the breath and the movement uh, happening and even if I get to the end it looks like I've stopped I'm going to reach a little more and I'm going to exhale and I'm going to move to the bottom half of that movement and then I just get there in time to keep going. For example if I do my ab curl ups as I come up I'm breathing out as I go down I'm breathing in I want to just get there in time to repeat that movement so that rather than doing 10 curl ups one two I'm going to do one long movement that just is comprised of 10 small parts. So 10 curl ups makes one movement as opposed to 10 individual ones. So now all you need to do is apply all those concepts and principles to your Pilates practice. Feel free to get in touch if you're unsure about anything that you're doing in any of my classes and I'll help you work through those. Even if it's looking at how you're doing the exercises or helping you to understand what I've been covering in those sessions.